with um, regards to sort of salespeople, not always myself, but how do you get them to kind of delve into the questions more and um, drill into the pain points? I find we're, we're, we're talking business software sales, so we're quite technical people and we like solving problems. So as soon as the conversation starts to sound like we can solve that, we get into sort of solution mode rather than really exploring more. And it's uncomfortable. How do you sort of convince people to do that when they're so fixed on solution selling or talking? So the, 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 the first part about, you know, you'll ask a question and the, the prospect or the customer will start answering and you can't even believe what it's like. They're loading rounds in every chamber. <laughs> it's like, stop talking so I can close this deal. And it, it's easy to want to jump ahead as soon as you hear that. And um, one of the things that, that is really useful, and this is in conceptual selling, is, uh, and there are different times when you want to practice with your own game. after every question. And it's find practice, some practice, practice golden silence. So ask a question and then let them answer. And particularly, I mean, in the, in the situation you're describing where it's like, I can't believe you just, you just handed me, you know, like the gun, the, the, the thing I've been waiting to hear is just give it a beat or two, just, huh. And a lot of times they'll just keep right on going mm -hmm. and they'll add more depth or, and as they start, this goes back to what I said at the beginning. Once they actually start thinking about it and start talking about it, then other things will come up that help enrich uh, and deepen the conversation. And if you allow it, and the problem with jumping in on top of it immediately or even interrupting their answer is that you, you shut that down. Mm. So the first thing is just to be aware of that. Mm. The, the other thing, that um, that I'm just a huge proponent of, and, and the two blinks talked about it, but not in the way that I really feel about it. And that's uh, call prep. Uh, really thinking about and the call you're going on, and all of this. I, I taught Miller Hyman programs for nine years. I. I, I think I did something like six or 700 seminars. So I'm unreasonably familiar with the content, but um, thinking about what's, what's the best I can hope for as a result of this call, they call it best action commitment. And what's the least I'll settle for as a result? What's the least I need to get to pay for the next call? Or I'm just not coming back, okay? And what do I need to find out? That becomes your valid business reason when you and then when you've got those things figured out what are the best ways for me to ask Laura this takes us back to the four kinds of questions the fifth one you want to keep for special circumstances but the other four the value of doing that and having your questions written down is you aren't thinking about them when the person's answering the first question you ask too often when you ask a question and they start talking, you stop listening because you're thinking about your next question mm -hmm. and you miss it. So Chris has got the right idea, write it down. This is helpful. Remember where you wrote it down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's almost like a bit of a crib sheet, isn't it? You you, you respond, you return to, um, you've, you've put the hard work in to prepare for it. You can then reuse that, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, when I was teaching seminars, we had a form that actually looked like binder paper, but the middle of the form was all your call planning. Mm -hmm. And this woman that had attended our seminar um, was, was taking a client out to lunch and she had that on the back seat of her car. And he's throwing his jacket in the back seat and he goes, huh, what's this? And I think his name was written on the outside. And she goes, uh, uh, and he, he picks it up. She said, well, that's my, uh, that's my call plan for lunch today. And he goes, cool. So he's sitting in the front seat while she's driving lunch and he's reading. He goes, oh, this is interesting. But that's he, respect. He just, you know, people appreciate that, don't they? People appreciate that. He started answering your questions. <laughs> he, wasn't, he wasn't off put. You know, it's like, 
Yeah, that's a good question. But here's the one you didn't ask. I mean, it became fun. Would you ever so, send it to them beforehand? Would you recommend? I always uh, recommend confirming appointments. And if you have a question or two here, if sending an agenda, here are a couple of things I'd like to cover. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have anything you want to add to this, please let me know. Uh, people are often afraid to confirm because it gives people a chance to bail out. I yeah. want them to bail out. If they don't want to meet, bail out. That's right. 